Okay, folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, let me explain what's going on here. A few weeks ago, we went on a bike ride. As I plugged in the uh, portable speaker, one of the cables got caught up and essentially yanked it and rendered the portable speaker useless. Uh, rather than try to fix it, I'd figure I'd just build a brand new one. I've built several of these before. First off, we have a couple sides here, the left and right side. This is the bottom side. This will be the top side. This is the back. And this beauty right here, this is gonna be the uh, face of the speaker box. I'll be using walnut. As you can see, it has some crazy uh, pattern here and within the grain and the color variation. It goes from light to dark. Um, so nice contrast there. Obviously, I'm gonna be de or, uh, drilling a couple holes here for the speakers. And this time, I'm actually going to go and install a passive sub, uh, passive speaker, which basically means it's not going to be um, connected to anything. It's just simply going to play off the sound from the other speakers, if that makes any sense. I'll explain later. Now to the electronics. Because this is going to be a portable speaker, we need a portable power source and I'm gonna be using a sealed rechargeable battery. It's a 12 volt, seven, seven amp um, battery here. I've used this one before, so it, I trust it and we can play music on, off of this battery for a solid eight hours before it starts uh, losing its power. And um, if you play the speaker box at high volumes, you'll start to notice the kind of the decline in, in power. There are a couple of kickers they're I believe three inches so it's the speaker and they have a uh, a tweeter in the middle um, here's the specs for all you uh, folks who want to know the specs or want to look it up there it is screenshot it bam gone okay next here is uh, okay yeah so this is the passive uh, speaker I was talking about I ordered this one from Parts Express by the way, Parts Express is not sponsoring me, but hey, Parts Express, listen up. There's a uh, opportunity here for you guys to sponsor me. So here it is. This thing's uh, pretty nice. Looks really nice. There it is. Um, like I said, it's passive, which means it doesn't connect to a darn thing. I'll get more into how that works a little later on, but it's a uh, a peerless passive uh, speaker there it is it's a good product haven't tried it but I've overall I've used uh, speakers and components from Parts Express and they never fail to amaze me this is this beauty right here is gonna be the power or the brains or whatever you want to call it it's a digital amp it's a two-way uh, amp so I'm assuming this right here is the, the main chipset here. I don't know the specs off the top of my head. You can go online and look them up. I'll give you the, the details possibly in the description so you can you know scroll down and, and look at that. But he, just a quick overview. This input right here. I've already pre-soldered this. By the way, you guys have to do this yourself. You guys have to solder the leads into the actual board yourselves. So this right here will, would be the right channel it's really hard to see I'm not gonna zoom in but um, focus there it is okay so it's the right channel this right here in the middle is the left channel and this right here leads off to the power which by the way already has the leads these will connect to the battery itself now I left a, an extra chunk of cable at the end that continues off of those leads from the battery why because I'm gonna have to charge the battery, right? I don't wanna to have to open up my speaker box simply to charge the battery. So that's what that's for. So, and then lastly, this, this input here is for an LED, optional LED. So when you turn on your, your, your amp, which is right here, this, it'll send power to the LED. And it lights up a cool blue, so that's pretty cool. I've always used it. It just gives it a nice little look to the overall speaker. And so how do you power it up, you may ask, or not. Uh, you use this, 
this I forget what it's called uh a bus uh whatever this is you guys know what it is uh can't think off the top of my head right now but anyway you connect this into the actual board here plug and play right here and so this will serve as the actual power knob and the more you turn it'll actually regulate the, the uh, volume um, of what's playing now questions is this a bluetooth amp no it's not frankly i i'm not too crazy about a uh, bluetooth option i know that's pretty popular but frankly i don't care too much for it I'd rather much just plug in RCA, or I'm sorry, a 3.5 millimeter R um, plug into here, and it leads right into my phone, or your iPod, or whatever you have as the uh, as the source. Uh, Parts Express also has uh, boards that come with the Bluetooth option already in it, if you're interested in that. The next step is drilling the holes for the, the left and right channels and the uh, passive speaker. Uh, I know I've already talked too much. You're probably tired of listening to my voice, so let's get to the actual build. This is what I just did. Cut out the three circles for the speakers. Chewed it up pretty nasty here, but doesn't even matter because the speaker is going to sit on top of it. All that will be hidden. All the nasty uh, cuts within with the jigsaw. I use a jigsaw, so not the prettiest. But it'll do because again, it'll be cut. All three holes will be covered by the speaker overlap um, on top of the uh, board itself. I only have two hands, so bear with me as I kind of demonstrate, kind of dry fit how all this comes together. The back piece, the left side, the right side. The back side, of course. Here's the front side. And here's the box with the top. If you're wondering what these holes are in the front, this is where the LED will go. This is where the volume control on off switch will be. And for those of you wondering, one sec. For those of you wondering what this extra piece of plywood is, I decided to add it simply because this sides these attachments is what's <clears throat> going to be used to attach the back so the back will actually screw in into these side pieces all the way around the bottom the sides and the top I have one here for the top so I'll put, I'm gonna put screws all around I might put a gasket I'm not sure yet what I'll use but definitely just to help seal the air within so that's what that's for and uh, just to give you a quick peek inside Again, this is where the LED will go, and this is where the volume control will go. It's gonna fit nicely in there. I already notched it out, uh, carved it out pretty good. Left about an eighth, a little bit of, a little bit more, over an eighth uh, in thickness down there, from the front to the back. Uh, so, yeah, what it is for now. Alrighty, <clears throat> just finished drilling out and chiseling out the yeah it looks pretty nasty right the holes for where the uh, little amp will sit so this is the inside look and this right here is the exterior of the box uh, which will go essentially like this that corner there whoops sorry right there and the amp will sit nicely in like that for the two openings power and the input oh, there you go just like that i'll make it look a little more pretty once i start completing this project okay before i start 
further assembly here it's easier to see when there's less components inside the box than trying to explain afterwards so what I've done so far is I've taken the board I've gone ahead and screwed it down to the actual box itself with two screws these screws are about uh, I'd say half inch each and what I also did was probably hard to see but I went ahead and hot glued the opening from the inside so that there won't be uh, a lot of air leakage through the holes that I pre-drilled before right here there this little one here I'm about to hot glue into this one this little hole there right in there I'm gonna hot glue it this is the opening for the power and volume control uh, I've also gone ahead and made this little enclosure which the battery will sit in originally I was just gonna have the battery sit back here maybe with some velcro or I was gonna try to secure it with velcro is what I'm saying but I didn't like that idea too much um, in case this box gets tossed around it's better if it's secured in an actual enclosure so that's the reason you see all these clamps it's I just apply glue and I'm clamping it down and letting it set uh, on the next clip you should see once it's installed in here I've just installed the LED light bulb. It's all hot glued in there. There you go. Speakers are in and wired. There you go. That's the left. This is the right. Zip tied. Keep everything nice and tight. Uh, again, this is the LED terminal. Uh, here's the volume control and on off button this is the bus I was talking about I think it's called the bus anywho just gonna plug that in real quick it's easy as that now looks like cables all over the place but I'm gonna zip tie these make it a lot cleaner like the others and lastly is this one here. This will go to the battery. The battery is right over here and like I said this is the little uh, enclosure I made for it that I mentioned earlier. It's gonna sit there. I'm gonna screw it down or glue it down either one or both. I don't know yet. This is the battery that's gonna sit right in there. Once it's secure, it's gonna sit nicely right in there. Boom. It's not gonna move anywhere, it's not gonna go anywhere. Terminals, I'm gonna plug right in there. Like I said, and these extra pieces, I'm probably gonna drill a hole right up here two tiny little holes for the positive and negative leads so I can <clears throat> charge them once the uh, battery dies so that'll give me that option
So before I attach the top and back boards to this box, I kind of wanted to give you a sense of what it looks like from the inside. Now that everything has been hooked up, I just installed the battery. As you can see, the power cables have been hooked up. These two on the back go directly to the amp down here. And these two, this one and this one, travel down here and out, outside of the box, right there. So that's going to be used to recharge this battery every so often whenever it needs to be charged. Like I said earlier, speakers have been installed and plugged in. And as you can see, there's the passive speaker, the power button, volume control, the LED. This is 95% complete, guys. I just applied a little small gasket, if you will, around the edge. Uh, so this is the back of the speaker box, obviously. And like I said, I'm gonna put a board here where I can, from time to time, remove it, remove it if I need to, to do any sort of maintenance. Uh, if required inside here without having to break apart the box after it's all been glued in place. So this is the only area that will not have glue, instead it will be a gasket. And the reason I have a gasket for those of you that know already, or actually for those of you who don't know, is we don't want any air escaping while this boom box is playing. Uh, so that's why. And I have the backboard right here. That's the inside this will be the outside I might have gone a little bit overboard with the with the holes for the screws but I like to have stuff secure uh, so it doesn't hurt to have a few extra screws in there and this is done check it out yeah what six five at the top five at the bottom Three on each side, yeah, a bit overboard, but whatever. It's the back side, you won't necessarily see that. Let's turn this thing around, see what it looks like. Check this out. Now, a couple things about this boom box. Um, oh, you might have noticed I added a sweet, sweet, little black steel knob check that out Pretty cool right again the LEDs right there okay uh, so yeah a couple things about this box again check it out what, what's wrong with it well nothing really except that the aesthetics isn't right again I used hardwood walnut here I used uh, looks like half inch plywood all around which is okay for this size enclosure what I'm not too crazy about and what I'm getting at is the end is showing for the plywood I don't like these ends at the home stores they sell I think it's called edge banding I've never used it I'm not a fan of that so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some leftover walnut I have, uh, mill it down to maybe a, an eighth thickness, and just apply it to the front. That way it'll kind of make it look a little better. For now, I think I'm going to leave it as is. I got other projects pending, so I'm going to move on to other projects. Let me just show you real quick this little knob here. It feels really solid when you turn it. Focus. There you go. The LED comes on, off, back on. Pretty cool, right? 
Obviously, I don't have it plugged into any audio source, but um, I will. I totally forgot to mention, it's roughly 16 inches uh, in width. It's about seven and a half inches high, and it's about eight inches deep. There you go. Next clip will be of me actually testing this bad boy. Really quick guys, before we do the uh, sound test, I made these feet for the box <clears throat> from the same material as the faceplate where the speakers go. It's walnut. It's a it's obviously hardwood, so should be very durable. I went ahead and countersunk these feet, so that way the screw will sit properly inside and won't scratch any of the surfaces where we end up putting this box. Something quick I have to mention before we do the sound test. Obviously, you're going to be listening to the sound coming out of these speakers through your earbuds, your earphones, or home speakers, or whatever. So that is the sound that you're listening to that is being recorded by the microphone on my device here. So you won't obviously hear the true full sound of what this speaker can output, unfortunately. But needless to say, this thing sounds pretty darn good. Let's do the sound test. I have iPad here. Let's go ahead and plug it in right in here, like so. There we go. I have a few songs lined up, so let's give it a shot. That's at about 25%, so about half. As you can see, it bumps. Now, let's play a little bit of 80s, see how it sounds on this thing. As you can see, it has plenty of power, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is only a two-channel, 15-watt per channel digital amp, and it puts out a ton of power. I've also gone ahead and added the edge banding out of the same material, walnut. I think it looks a lot better. There you go. Oh, and th those are the feet that I've attached. If you have any other questions, comments feel free to leave them below i'll try to get to your comments or questions if you have any i did mention that i was going to talk a little bit about the uh i've been calling it passive speaker but the proper term is a passive radiator so essentially all that does is enhance the bass response of the speakers so essentially uh, what we just heard were these two speakers uh moving air making sound and in in response or in return, this passive radiator is essentially moving air uh, that is produced by these two speakers. Trust me, I've built several of these without the passive radiator and having this passive radiator there sounds a lot better. I gotta get drunk before the day begins, before my mother starts out my friends. About to go and damn near went blind, yo. So get into the face, so. Put, 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 put your lighters up. Put, 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 put your cups up. Put, 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 put your cups up. 